If natural boron has two isotopes, 18.9% boron-10 and 81.1% boron-11, what is the average atomic mass of boron? So to you solve this problem, we need to use this equation here for average atomic mass, AAM. Uh, note this symbol here, the Greek uh, sigma, capital sigma. And in mathematics, that means that you're going to add up. So it just means what's in this bracket here. If you uh, need to do it several times, you've got to add them all up. And in this case, we have two isotopes. So basically, we'll be putting numbers into this formula twice and adding them together. Had there been three isotopes, we would do this formula three times and add them all up. And that's what the sigma here means. So we're looking for the average atomic mass, AAM. And we know we have two isotopes. So we'll fill in the brackets the first time here. The first isotope we're looking at is boron 10. The 10 means the mass number, which goes into the equation here. So the percent is 18.9%. So we'll put that where the percent goes into the equation, divided by 100. And we'll times it by the mass number for boron 10, which is just 10. The sigma then means add up the other one, however many have, in this case, two. So we'll just do the whole thing again. For boron 11 this time, there's 81.1%, all divided by 100. And we multiply that by boron 11's mass number, which is 11. So what we're doing here is finding the average between these two isotopes. Now note that there's quite a bit more boron 11 than boron 10. Uh, there's 81.1% of all the boron that you have in a certain sample is boron 11, and only 18.9% of all the boron in your boron sample. It's a mix of these two isotopes, and only 18.9% of it is the isotope boron 10. So we should expect the average to be closer to 11 than 10, since uh, there's a lot more of the boron 11 in our sample than there is boron 10. Sort of like if a lot of people make 100 on a test and only a few people make zero, the class average isn't 50 because the two marks are zero and 100. If uh, most of the class makes 100, then the class average is probably somewhere, let's say, in the 90s, depending on what the numbers are, not necessarily 50 because, um, again, there's a lot more making 100 than zero. So let's go through the math. First off, let's get rid of these fractions. Tell that when you divide a percent by 100, you're just turning that percent back into a decimal. They mean the same thing. In math, you don't put in percent uh, as, a, as a number. You always turn it back into a decimal. And so when you divide by 100, you're really just moving the decimal place over two places. And so we get 0.189 times 10 plus 0.811 times 11. Now we do uh, inside the brackets again order of operations and when we get these two numbers we will add them together. So 0.189 times 10 is 1.89 and we'll add up 0.811 times 11 is 8.921 and when we add that up we get 10.81 atomic mass units. Don't forget your units here. This is a weight for this, uh, this sample of, of uh, boron. So this is the average when we have a sample that contains these two isotopes. Since most of it was boron 11, we expect an average to be closer to 11 than 10, and that is in fact what we find.